All right, welcome to part seven of the Root River uh, skiff build. Um, in this episode or part, we're gonna work on just getting um, uh, tying up some of the loose ends that we have um, before we start um, uh, uh, stitching uh, the boat together. So I'll just do some pre-finishing of some of the pieces, do some sanding to get ready, um, or since it's easier, since it's flat, and do some scarfing work. So let's get started. All right, so just want to do a quick recap of what we did on part six. So we uh, fiberglass the side panels. The other side is fiberglassed. Um, and before that, we uh, scarfed the pieces of plywood together. So we have the side panels cut out and then the bow piece cut out. I just have it um, kind of mocked up right now. Um, and then on certain parts of the sides, I took a hand plane and beveled it. Um, that will be, so for this case, this is the, the front side of the side panel. So I beveled it and also beveled these uh, bow pieces so that they would uh, meet. And then also beveled um, the actual bow of the boat. Um, so another thing that we'll have to do on the side panels is scarf um, for, the, for the transom. So... We'll cut a three inch uh, scarf on each of the um, the back side of the side pieces. Um, and then we will eventually um, uh, cut scarfs into uh, the curved transom. But I want to, uh, what I will do is I'll cut the side, the scarfs on the side panels, and then we'll stitch everything all together, excluding on the transom. And then I'll be able to take the transom and then kind of line it up and see where I actually need to um, cut the scarfs on um, on the transom. So, you know, the transom is, I made it a little big to allow for that. So we'll be doing that, but just wanted to do a little better walkthrough of the scarf joints that I will be using because I didn't do a good job in, um, in the last episode explaining. So, uh, for, for the, for the, and this will be the same, this is the same scarf that I used to, um, put the plywood, um, panels together. So it'll be the same as back there. Um, so you have your standard scarf right, uh, right here, which is just a very, um, sharp angled, um, bevel on, uh, the pieces of wood. It can be done on plywood or, or, um, just pieces of hardwood doesn't really matter. Just get the length that you need. That's all a scarf is doing is giving you the, the, the length that you need when you can't get, um, a long enough piece out of what you have. So for in this case, to get the, the length that we needed for the sides, um, we needed that. So for in the case of where the transom is going to meet, we need to be able to have a strong joint there for them to meet. So that's where the scarf comes in. So, um, and it just gives you more glue or a surface area to glue. Um, for, for the scarf that I'm doing, I'm doing an eight to one ratio. Sometimes it goes up to 10 to one. Um, it's all about the preference. So what it is is that you take, um, the one represents the thickness of whatever material that you're doing and you'll multiply that times eight. And that gives the total length of what the scarf should be so for my case um it is the the plywood is three eighths inches thick so you take three eighths times eight would get you three inches so my scarf from this point to this point is three inches long so i'm doing a step, step scarf um there's a couple other scarf joints that you can do but that's what i'm choosing to do it has a lot of surface area for glue um, so for a step scarf, I'm going to have, um, so it'll be one, two, three steps in it. So you divide it by two. So take three divided by two and you have inch and a half is how wide each one of the, the steps is going to be. So then you have to say, okay, so I have three steps, the one, two, three. And so really the material is, um, nine millimeters thick so you take nine millimeters divided by three and that gets you three millimeters so each of one of these steps is three 
on three centimeters um, or it's three centimeter increments. So what I did is that I have a router set up right here and I have a router set up right there um, with, with edge guides. And so I'm lucky I have two routers with two edge guides. So I was able to just leave the setup I have over here and use the same um, routers for all my scarves. So um, this one right here is set up um, for a different uh, a width of a scarf cut and then a depth. And then this one is set up as well. So I'll just leave those two um, set up for throughout this because I'll have to cut some or throughout the whole project since I'm gonna um, have some more scarfs to cut. So I'll just put the, the, the edge guide along the edge of the plywood and then I'll cut it. Um, and then I'll come up with the scarf joint. So just wanted to give a better um, uh, description on what um, the scarfing process is um, that, I'm, that I will be doing. So now that we have that explained, so I'll cut the scarfs out on um, the back of the boat for the transom. All right, so you can see here, I got the first step in the scarf cut. So I have the other router right here, so we'll cut the the other uh, step on the scarf right now. All right, so I got the second uh, step cut with uh, the router. So I won't be doing anything um, right now, but uh, one thing that you have to do when you um, do some scarfing, it doesn't matter if it's your more your traditional beveled scarf or a step scarf or any of the other kinds, um, you're gonna have to do some tweaking. So what I do is that I use a rabbiting um, block plane. This is just some um, cheap one, um, but Lee Nielsen has one. So I'll use that um, just to do some fine tweaking, take off just a little bit of material. And what's nice about um, a rabbiting block plane is that the blade goes all the way um, to the edge. So I am able to do the, the, the flat spot of the lap joint. And also I can um, come in and do the, the, I guess, so if you would say, if the, very similar to a staircase, um, I'm able to do the, the, the run and also the rise. Um, so that's nice. So I'll just do, I won't do any tweaking right now. Um, I have to wait and see what the scarf looks like on the um uh what's it called? the on the transom so just wanted to show you uh how it turned out so i have the other side to do so i'll cut uh, the scarf on that one all right so i got the, the scarfs on uh on the sides cut for the transom um done so the next thing that we're going to do is um do some pre-sanding to um uh, the panel. So I'm going to flush out, um, and get rid of all that, um, extra squeeze out, um, epoxy from, uh, scarfing. I did the other side before I fiberglassed. Um, and then another thing that I'm going to do is, um, I'm going to sand all the fiberglass that I've already done. So I'll pull this. So, so all the fiberglass, so these two pieces and then these two pieces on one side are fiberglassed and then has a fill coat on it um, as well. So the reason why I did the fill coat, like I explained in the last episode, was that's the coat that I am going to be um, sanding so I don't sand into uh, the fiberglass uh, fibers. So since this um, epoxy has been sitting for more than a day it's it should be it's fully cured yeah, i the it's been cured now for a little over a week so it's done curing so i don't get a chemical bond anymore so the only way to get a bond is through a physical bond or a good bond is through a physical bond so by taking a sander and scuffing it up um, making it not as shiny um, i get that so since the panels are flat right now they're easy to sand um so it's just easier to do that before they um, get all curved and such. So I'll be doing some pre-sanding on um, these bell pieces and the side pieces. 
and also on um, the bottom as well. So I'll just be taking my Rotex and going over stuff quick. Um, and then everything will eventually get um, another coat of, fire, of, uh, of epoxy over it um, eventually. So get everything sanded up. Um, and then everything that is uh, still uh, um, uh, raw uh, uh, plywood, I'm just going to roll on a thin coat of epoxy. Again, it's just easier to um, do that um, while it's flat. So we'll get to sanding and then uh, we'll roll on some epoxy on the raw plywood. All right, so I got all the existing um, epoxy sanded out. You can see right here. So it doesn't need to be perfect, just enough. Um, kind of dull it will be good. So did it to all the pieces that have plywood. So what I'm going to do now is <clears throat> just roll on a coat of um, epoxy and then I'll let that set up overnight and let it harden um, and that will seal the wood and then I'll come back and just do the same thing do a, um, a sand on it just to while it's flat it's easy to sand and that and that way that um, I can get a physical bond um, further down the road so we'll roll on um, some epoxy right now and then we'll pick this up uh, when I start sanding up the pieces again tomorrow all right so it's the next day now and the epoxy has cured enough to where I can sand it. Um, it's a little rough, but not too bad. So just gonna take the Rotex and go over it again, smooth it out a little bit um, in just preparation for farther down the, the road when we have to do more um, epoxy and fiberglass work that will bond. So we'll get it sanded up quick. So the final thing that we're gonna do to prep before scarfing is we're gonna actually glue um, the bow of the boat together. So I just have some tape right here and then I have the mitered seam down there. This will just help keep it um, together. And then I have this spreader that I have already holes pre-drilled for. You know, I earlier I had it, I showed you it, I'm just, or showed what it's gonna look like. So now we're just gonna glue it. Um, I think that by gluing or epoxying it now, um, it'll just, make it a lot easier um, when stitching. I think there's gonna be a lot of force put on this, so um, I think it'll just be better. While I'm stitching though, I'll leave this in to help um, keep it apart. Uh, so I'm just gonna be making mixing up some epoxy um, and put some thickener in it, and then I'll be putting it uh, in the miter and screwing it together. So I'll pick it up when I have that done. All right, so I got the bow all glued together. Turned out nice. I ended up putting tape on the inside to help clean up the mess of any squeeze out. And then I just took my, or had a, a rubber glove on and then smoothed it out just so uh, I didn't have to do any sanding in there and turned out nice. So we'll let this set up for a while. And next thing will be get to uh, stitching the boat together. All right, so that's it for this part of the, the Root River uh, skiff uh, boat build. Um, I don't know when I'll be able to start uh, stitching uh, the boat together. It might be a couple weeks. I'll be um, on vacation out in Montana uh, with my family uh, fly fishing. So super excited for that um, and looking forward to a break. So when I get back or maybe sometime this week uh, before we go, um, I'll be able to stitch it, stitch it together. But until then, thanks for watching.